Hey guys, and welcome to my first ever broadcast here in Twitch. So hopefully the internet connection will be good and uh, the transmission will be fine. Um, uh, a bit, a, a few words about me. I'm, um, I have many roles, but right now my role is like a CMS podca podcast host. Uh, that's a new CMS that I've started recently and I hope to, um, uh, first of all, I hope you'll subscribe and, uh, uh, well, it's going to be a long series of discussion about various CMS systems um, and this is kind of, uh, 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 although this is not a, a podcast show, it's a Twitch broadcast, but it's all in the service of providing great content for the CMS podcast. Um, so, uh, why Laravel Spark? I mean, is it uh, a CMS system? Well, not. Uh, it's more like a Laravel package that lets you build and run uh, apps that, that would make your idea go online very fast. So you don't have to write, uh, you know, tedious lines of code and, and uh, to hook everything up where, when, when you needed, say, a couple of weeks to hook everything up. Now you need um, a couple of hours. So uh, let's see um, who who's the main target for, for this uh, product. I mean, who is it for? So basically, um, I believe that most of inspiration for this um, product came from Laravel Forge. So I'm not sure if you're, you've used it, but Forge, and uh, hopefully I won't expose any um, information that's not supposed to be exposed but essentially if you look at the forge as a system that allows you to uh, provision servers and quickly deploy new uh, servers using any um, any any service such as digital ocean um, then you'll be aware of some similarities between forge and um, Forge and Spark. So basically, this is uh, built on um, using Angular, and I, I guess that down the road when Vue.js came uh, and was published, that Taylor was sort of thinking it would be cool if I could rewrite Forge using Vue and make it even better than it is. And I guess that you know you want to. Uh, make your effort uh, as pro you know to to maximize your efforts in terms of okay why wouldn't I create this as a product as a separate product and I am pretty sure that in, in within the next couple of weeks or months Forge would be also based on Laravel Spark so um, I'm not. I'm not using Envoy, we're not using Envoy here in Orange Hill Development, but I believe it's sort of a similar service. So, um, what else? I mean, um, we're using a service called Automatic for, for backup of, of some of our projects. So, for instance, um, by the way, this is built on Laravel as well. Uh, but for instance, uh, the plan selection, the various, you know, different standard advanced business plans, etc., etc., update account information, uh, billing information, and whatnot, everything that you can see here, uh, you can build using Spark. So, uh, back to Spark landing page. So let's see. Um, 
Let's look at these features. Hopefully you can you can still read the titles and I I'm just gonna grab a screenshot so that's e easier for you to follow. So um, let's mark these like authentication, um, subscriptions, okay, teams. Invoices not, team billing not, announcements, user impersonation, um, two-factor authentication. Okay, like these six features would be sufficient for someone to, to open up his wallet and buy this app, I believe. Because like these six features, with these six features you could provide uh, back-end uh, and front-end user experience for your customers uh, similar to, I don't know, any, anything that's uh, applicable to this system such as, I don't know, uh, Bitbucket, uh, for instance, has Teams. Uh, I believe GitHub has Teams and many s software as a service products need these features. Now, uh, when you add team billing and invoices, you have like uh, this ability to, to sell your product. And then uh, another cool feature here is API out of the box. So if you need to open up your product um, to developers in terms of, hey, would you like to use our API? there's an easy way for you to do that as well. Um, when, when it says here like easy upgrades, it's, it's really easy uh, as, as you will see and it's definitely customizable. So um, let's look at the, let's look at the app. Um, it's, a lengthy procedure, I may tell you. Uh, it takes some time to install Spark. So everything is pretty well documented here. So uh, I, I managed to install Spark using Spark installer. So in, in order to run it, you need to have Lar Laravel installer. Uh, if you're not a Laravel user, then um, perhaps you're not that familiar with tools that Laravel um, lets you use as a developer. So if you're using uh, a Laravel Homestead a Vagrant machine, then that's easiest, the easiest way to go. So in this uh, broadcast, I'm using a Laravel Homestead and it's a bit old version and I had some issues uh, with installation that are, I believe, mostly due to having um, an uh, old version of Homestead. So these, these are the issues that, that I've had. Uh, I had. I had tested the Spark version 1, which was, I think, released a, a year ago or something like that. But, you know, I completely forgot that I did so. So uh, by installing Spark installer again, I was actually still using the Spark installer 1.0.0 instead of 1.0.3. And it missed some uh, crucial stuff that didn't let me proceed. So once I figured that out, then I ran into guzzle issue. I had like an old version of that. Then finally, I got the... the um, Spark homepage running, but when I clicked register, uh, you know, there was a, an error and basically it was due to Xdebug max nesting level, which was set to 100. But if you upgrade Homestead right now, it will default to 250, I think. Um, and the final issue that I've had was compiling the the javascript using gulp uh, there was this weird issue with 
preset ES2015. So basically, I found the uh, FX on this URL and it, uh, be, uh, you know, instructed to install these two um, packages. And what's strange is that this bug still persists. Um, I, I installed Spark first time when I, um, you know, tested it and then uninstalled so that I can have a fresh install for this broadcast. And once I reinstalled, I still had this issue, which, you know, I'm not really good with Node. And um, I'm not really sure why is this, but okay, so there it is. Um, oh, cool, there, there are some messages in the chat, so let's see. How oh, can I have this? A bit larger. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, so watching with sound would be uh, bad. Okay, so guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. I'll, I'll check the chat once in a while. while. Uh, so if you have any questions and if anything's unclear, please let me know. Okay, so uh, these were the installation issues. Um, uh, let's let's move on. So, uh, what's next? Um, Laravel basically, um, I mean Laravel Stripe uh, Spark. Sorry, lets you use Stripe and Braintree. Um, payment systems out of the box. So for all of us located in countries that are not supposed supported by Stripe or Braintree, that's pretty bad. But, uh, you know, if you plan to, to run um, like a, a SaaS or a business that's internationally available, I think it's a pretty good idea if you'd register your company somewhere in the US, not Panama. Uh, we don't want that. Uh, uh, we don't want to be in the news. <laughs> um, but this is quite quite good effort by Stripe. I mean, um, if you go here, you'll see that Stripe Atlas is, uh, well, an idea that will let you open a company. Uh, I think it's in, uh, in Delaware, yeah. And unfortunately, it's still, it's still in um, beta, I think, yeah. But you can actually apply here and you'll be notified once the service goes live. What's great about this is that, I don't know if the figures are mentioned here, yeah. So beta will cost, cost it will cost you $500 to open a company in US and it'll be, um, uh, it'll be what sort of company? I'm not sure, Th there was a mention about that as well, but take a look please. Uh, you also get support from these uh, companies uh, in terms of getting you up to speed with, with I don't know, law stuff and, and uh, well, basically all the things that you don't know about you as business if, if you're not living there. And um, yeah, there are some Stripe fees and I think that yearly a uh, US company wouldn't cost you more than a couple of hundred dollars. Um, uh, you know, that's that's what I've read somewhere here. Uh, so with that out of the way, um, uh, we may just hope that Serbia will uh, be uh, listed uh, within uh, Spark supported countries, or alternatively, this uh, Stripe Atlas will go live and you guys will be, uh, I mean, not just from Serbia, but from all, the, all other 
beautiful countries that are uh, not supported by Spark, will, you will be able to open a company that's US based and uh, I mean, that's only good for your business because you'll be uh, running under US laws and that will provide your customers with more uh, like confidence than if you run a company from, say, you know, Serbia. <clears throat> okay. So, the features. Let's dive into um, installation. All right, so I did all this. I did install um, Spark using Spark. First, you need to register. Uh, of course, first you need to go and buy your license. When you go and buy your license, you generate the token, and then you use your Spark uh, command line tool to reg register your Spark installer with the spark.laravel.com. When you do that, um, you are able to run this command, which will create uh, a project name folder uh, uh, when you run this and it'll download, first it will download Laravel um, and then it will uh, like hook, hook up Spark installation upon that and then it will install NPM dependencies and then finally it will run Gulp and if you're uh, if you didn't have any issues, you'll basically uh, see this. So I've set up my Spark local installation to spark.dev. Um, but if you go to register, and if I try to register right now, it'll, it'll most, most likely fail because uh, you need to run your mi migrations. All right, so first error. Let's see, let's set up dot in in the file. So I have uh, database name Spark, username Homestead, password secret. Let's see what else we can set up here. Spark dot dev cache release. Uh, let's not set mail. Uh, Stripe model, okay, Stripe key and Stripe secret, okay. Um, I'll probably hide that from you guys. So let's see, Stripe, by the way, I've never used Stripe before. I've opened the account just so that I can test the, the like Laravel Spark. And it's super simple, I mean, it's like 10 minutes uh, uh, of, of time that you you need to, uh, you know, understand anything that you you really need to understand about Stripe. So let's let's hide my screen. Uh, though I'm not sure when will I be ever or ever be able to use actually Stripe. Okay, where's my where's my stuff? So account settings and yeah task small for my password. Here's my password. And API keys. I'm pasting them right now. So stripe secret key and stripe publishable key. All right, I'm done. All right. Um, these are like test keys, so no need to hide those. Um, these are like brain tree parameters that we don't need right now. And hopefully this will run our migrations now. Okay, so let's check it out. Um, 
Cool, everything's here. All right, so let's go back and uh, create an account and password, password, password. Or let's use one of these existing passwords. Registering. All right, I'm inside the dashboard. So uh, right now we have a notification that uh, like informs me that my trial peri period will expire on May 2nd and I don't have any announcements. I have my uh, menu, user menu, which we'll go through in a minute, but let's let's take a, a look at a documentation once more so i think that we're done with uh, the installation process uh oh no there, there's one more thing here uh since um all right so so the cool feature about spark is that if it recognizes that you're using an email that's tied to to Gravatar service, it will automatically fetch it. But if you need to upload your photo, then it'll go to it'll go to storage app public folder, which is not accessible publicly. So you need to create uh, a link, uh, symbolic link to make it uh, available so let's do that so just that that uh, we we're not um, we don't have that problem later on when we create another user so let's see uh, i think this is it storage public yep should be cool okay so these are various installation types that we'll talk about a bit later and let's let's just show how easy it is to update spark so if you run php artisan spark update it'll connect to a private um, github i believe repo and i'm not sure if it's github or anything else but it'll basically check if there's anything um, if there's a new version and it'll up, update um, automatically now um, let's look at let's see quick start um, configuring billing plans okay let's quickly look at billing plans so that you're uh, not wondering why I had this notification here when I just you know first started this app cool so um that's all configured in 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 uh spark service provider so let's look at spark service provider um when i first opened up like spark service provider um i, I was kind of wondering why are all these config values stored in here? Why is it not in some config file like we're used to when we're using Laravel? But as I tested the application, then you know it, it quickly became clear to me that if you did this in some uh, config file, then the app would you know read that config file and then apply the same values to create these um, these kind of uh, expressions and it's just an extra step that you as a developer that i believe know what you're doing um don't need um and actually this works pretty good and i'm pretty satis satisfied with this hopefully it will not you know change in in a future requiring you to rewrite your app nobody likes that uh so let's quickly fill fill the, these uh, details so okay let's say orange hill Development is our company. Our product is uh, Photon CMS. Our street is okay. George One B, and we're in Belgrade. 
Serbia. And our phone is, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's see. Uh, okay, this, this one is interesting. Um, this uh, developers array lets you define which user are entitled to uh, enter a, a feature called kiosk. So uh, I'm gonna add add my email here. Save, uh, refresh, and I should be able to see kiosk. Yeah, here it is. So I've just let the application know that uh, the user with that email is actually like main administrator and <coughs> presumably the owner of the app. So we'll get back to kiosk a bit later. For, for now, let's leave, leave this uh, as it is. Uh, so let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, application will expose API. We will need that later. Um, and this is the part where you actually set the plans for your service or your product. So this line here actually uh, defined that we're using Stripe as a payment provider, that we're not requiring a credit card to be entered before you're allowed to sign up. And we will give all, all users that sign up like 10 days of trial period. And we have this free plan um, and all the features of free plan <clears throat> are listed here. So this is kind of, I probably want to have more details about my plans than to specify them as a list that later appears as, 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 as these like three bullet points. But I think it, it's something it's enough to work with, with. And there's another plan like basic plan with uh, this, this um, string here actually needs to, um, uh, needs to be, uh, needs to exist in Spark as a plan. So let's set up the, that right now. So let's go back to Spark. Uh, no, sorry, Stripe. And let's go to dashboard and let's look at the, 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 the plans. And I've created a monthly plan uh, that's $9.99, but uh, okay, let's update that. Uh, we're having like $9.99 here as well. And well, that's basically it. So it's, its ID is monthly, so we need to have this here. Um, yeah, I guess that's sufficient for now. So if we go back to the Spark admin panel, should be able to see that it's $9.99 monthly. It's selected, but I'm still not able to purchase that. This is selected because I'm on a free trial for 10 days and it has these plan features. So when I enter billing information, we're gonna use Spark Test credit card. So these, these are not real. Uh, let's enter zip postal code. And later on, I'll be demoing uh, the, the coupon feature. That's pretty cool. I mean, it works out of the box. It's amazing. So when I subscribe, <clears throat> it connects to Stripe and hopefully it will return with a success message. Yeah, everything's great, works. And it, it subscribed me to basic monthly plan. So I can go back to uh, the free plan right now. And it will cancel my subscription, but um, these like uh, these uh, use cases are so well worked out that, you know, I think you'll have no problems at all 
or unpredictable use case that you need and it's not covered by Spark, it's pretty good. I mean, Taylor did a great job. So basically it lets you uh, use your uh, subscription since you're already, already charged for it uh, by May 22nd and you can resume at any time at no extra cost. So, so I can just resume and this would just uh, um, tell Stripe that I'm willing to pay for another monthly period. Okay, cool. So, so that's, that's like a couple of, you know, a uh, couple of uh, I don't know, words about uh, the booted uh, method and the way that you uh, use uh, Spark to set up uh, Stripe as your payment provider. Okay, so let's go back to the, the documentation. So, um, configuration, building your application and everything. So, if you want to change your, so you're probably wondering, okay, how do I build, build my app? Okay, so, so this is only the back end. Uh, what if I want to add the actual app? So, basically, it all happens uh, here, uh, the home page is like the source of your um, user's journey, so to speak. So let's look at resources that, that are handle, handling this. I think it's uh, okay, probably in resources, views, vendor, Spark, and, 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 and. Hmm. Kiosk. Okay, where's where's home? Layout, rules, and settings. Uh, oh, here it is. Okay, so when, whatever I change here, uh, it should update. But if you're uh, rewriting less, as underneath is. Uh, basically Twitter bootstrap and if you rewrite less you'd want to recompile everything with gulp I'm not gonna do that right now I mean because it takes ages but <clears throat> basically that's the workflow um, what happens during the the spark installation is that it copies all of the resources from the spark folder uh, right, located here uh, to Laravel application here and you're pretty much uh, free to edit any of these uh, like blade templates uh, to customize your application. So let's see if I can find navigation, uh, user right blade all right, guys, wait, subscriptions. Left side of number, nav bar. I'm not sure what happens if I write here. Um, I think here, maybe over here. Uh, no, is it even here? Oh yeah, it's here. Uh, so basically, um, it, it'll add to existing HTML code that's that's already in there. But uh, let's see, how could I update the the header? So, um, like it's it's a bit weird, but Spark dot .com uses spark actually to um to run the the website so let's see if i can log in yeah okay so so this is how the the spark dot .com app looks like inside so you're basically able to build something like this uh, 
using by using Spark. So you have like Spark releases here, you have your licenses here, and you have like your documentation link here. And of course you have all, all the notifications and announcements. Um, oops. All right, announcements that Taylor sends and everything. So it's it's pretty customizable. Um, since we're, I mean, uh, I didn't plan for this broadcast to be more than like an hour, hour and a half max. So I'm just going to quit searching for, for blades that are used to render the page. And believe me, it's, it's pretty, pretty simple. What's important to know here though, is that, you know, I saw this folder named vendor and, um, when I say when vendor, it means, okay, don't touch this folder because it's going to get over, overwritten next time you update the app. But Spark will actually uh, take care uh, not to overwrite the modified blade templates. So you're pretty much safe to run Spark update. And when it uh, does copy new resources, it will not overwrite anything that you've uh, already changed here. So that's a good thing. Um, okay. Um, so I guess that that that's about it. The uh, I mean, quick start. We're up and running. So let's get into the the details. Uh, let's look at announcements. Announcements are, well, <clears throat> an easy way to notify your users about news, about what's new with your beautiful app and stuff like that. So if you go to kiosk, but uh, yeah, let's go to kiosk and, and create an announcement. So right uh, when you uh, click on a kiosk link, it basically takes you right to the announcements page. So let's say like, hello world. Uh, this is my first announcement. And what's cool here is that um, It supports Markdown, so you're basically able to format this nice and not just not have it just as as a plain text. Action, action button text is something that you can you're not like it's not obligatory. You don't have to fill this, but if you do, it will appear as an action button below your announcement. So let's just say uh, like learn more, and we'll link that to. Um, Spark website. So, okay, that's created. You can edit it, you can delete it. But when you go to um, your, uh, why am I logged out? I'm not logged out. All right. So, when you go back, you'll be able to see this new announcement pretty nicely formatted. formatted and the link works so everything's cool uh, um, these are like um, alphabetically sorted so it's kind of weird to jump from subject to subject but let's let's do it that way i mean we'll cover it anyway so api uh, when i first saw like uh api uh, out of the box, I thought, okay, since Spark app is um, actually, uh, it actually uses Vue.js and it must use some sort of API to uh, run that Vue.js app. I thought that it basically lets you access that API so that you can use it um, wherever uh, in your mobile app or, or to provide your users with an access and stuff like that. 
Um, but it's actually um, not that, though I'm not really sure if, if uh, this use case is, is possible or not. Perhaps it is. But what you can do is you can create your own APIs and control user access uh, in a pretty nice way using the Spark app. So let's go back to the settings page, which will let me uh, create an API token. So let's say okay test token is it's a it's a you know human readable name and when i create it i'm able to uh, use it uh, to access the api which still is, is still not existing it doesn't exist yet so let's uh let's store it somewhere so that i don't forget it okay uh, that's pasted and let's go back and see uh, what do we need to do so we need to use this middleware in order to protect our API routes so let's go to route routes file and let's create this route so right now uh, we're not returning anything, so let's let's use I don't know app user um, first and return that, and since we have a user in in the database, it'll grab the first record and. Uh, it'll automatic, automatically sorry, out, output it as uh, JSON. So let's see if this works. Let's fire up Postman. No questions. Uh, I wonder, are, are you still with me, guys? If or I'm too boring. All right, so uh, what was the route? It's API slash users. API slash users send. Uh, with, with what it said is the page you're looking for could not be found. Why is that? API users, is this the correct route file? Yeah. Will this work? Oh, sorry. All right. Guys, what am I doing wrong? Let's look at the console. Uh, all right, so I messed up. Uh, I'm missing, I'm missing the curly. Braces here. Is this working? Woo All right, so I'm I'm unauthorized. So to be able to log in, I just need to pass a get parameter. It's API token. So I I pr presume this is the wrong API token. This is the one I used when I first tested it. But if I paste paste like uh, working API token here. Um, send. Cool. It works. So everything here, all the, the user data is here. Uh, so you can pretty much do anything you like here. And as an extra goodness, you can actually, I think we don't need Postman anymore. 
you can also define um, abilities like mentioned here. So we won't go in, in details on this because we don't have that much time. Uh, but API uh, authentication work, works great out of, out of the box. So let's see uh, what happens with billing. First, let's create another user so that we don't use like this um, administrator, administrator user all the time. So let's register a new one. Um, okay, identities. Okay, this is my like, test. And let's use the same password as for the administrator. All right, so we're registered. And you see this user doesn't have like um, a photo. So let's see if, if the thing that I did before really works. So let's use a CMS podcast uh, logo that'll work. Okay, cool, works. Uh, all right, so let's see. Uh, this user is subscribed to the same plans. I mean, the same free plan as our administrator user before. Let's see if, what announcement he has. Yeah, he has that announcement already because it was made before he registered. And let's give him a credit card. Cool. Uh, while we're doing this, let's test how how the how coupons work. So let's go back to the Stripe admin panel. So I've created one test coupon here that says fifteen percent off once, and it's it has like five redemptions, meaning that only the first five users that use this coupon. Uh, will be able to do so, and after that it will expire. So the coupon is simply one, two, three. So if I enter one, two, three here, I should be able to use that coupon. Let's see if this works. Da -da -da. Yeah, okay, so it worked. And I mean, subscription work, but sadly it didn't inform me that uh, a coupon was applied. I'd like to have that information as well, but okay, let's see if it actually was applied because I would be notified uh, via email that uh, a certain amount was deducted from my credit card account. So uh, I guess, yeah, this is the one. This is the payment that was made. So it actually used up a coupon and it didn't charge this user 9.99 it said it charged it 15 percent less so okay this works um let's go back to the docs to see what we have here so uh, like i said you can specify your provider or as a stripe or braintree that's covered user billing plans that's that's uh okay this is interesting if i add like a yearly plan here that'll that'll basically allow you to sign up for uh a year and it would probably provide your users with some special pricing so yeah okay so this will not work in uh, in real life like in stripe since i don't have this real yearly pro plan defined in in stripe but let's see what happens in the admin panel here so it will actually add a yearly uh, button up here and it'll let you choose a yearly plan so let's add another like monthly plan here so it'll be uh, basic but cooler and it will also be monthly and it will be like $14.99 you see how easy it is to, to add these um, subscriptions so it's really nice so this is my current plan um, 
but I'm not really sure why is it showing that I'm subscribed to both of these. All right, let's see. Um, did I miss something? All right, so it has the same ID here. Monthly cooler. Let's see. Yeah, that was it. So if I, uh, I'm currently subscribed to basic plan. Yeah, thanks to other <laughs> site. Uh, if I change back to um, no, let's let's demo this out. So if, if you plan to expire this plan, so you don't want to offer this one, like the basic monthly plan to use your users anymore, you're not supposed to just delete it. That, that, that would cause a problem. Instead, you would, you would archive it. So you would just add this method here. Like, let's archive this plan. And when I refresh, a bit of magic happens. It says that uh, if, if you remember, it's the message that I have in, in, in automatic. Mm, 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 automatic. Um, Yeah, it says this plan is no longer available for purchase. If you change your plans, you will not be able to go get this one back. Yeah. Uh, so this is the same situation and it's covered here and it, it, it works. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, that's it. You're able to select any other plans free, this basic but cooler or yearly, but you're not able to go back to your previous monthly plan. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, so we have team billing, which we'll cover a bit later with themes, though I'm not really sure are we, do we really need to, but you're able to have like special payment plans for teams, um, which is great. Uh, collecting billing address. This is not really uh, that interesting checking subscription yeah so if, if you want to check uh, in your app if someone paid or not you have methods ready um, so this is like what I already explained the issue with I mean the, the case where you don't require require a card up front stuff like that yeah site-wide promotions this is re also really nice you're able to run promotions site-wide for all, all your members which will uh, apply the the same coupon co code for your, all your users um, and of course you can customize your currency right now we're in dollars but here's an example how would you how how to set up euro as a currency and of course there are various billing uh, events it uses Laravel events system to be able so, so that it uh, makes it easy for you to hook into any of these defined events all right so that was billing um, customization uh, don't I'm not sure if we need to cover any of this uh, teams individual teams um, okay this is not that interesting uh, European VAT is also not too interesting because, you know, in Europe, th some countries charge uh, collect tax based on the location of the customer. So if you need this, it's supported, but it's supported only using Stripe payment provider and it's all boring tax and legal stuff. So we won't be covering this, but it's possible. Uh, kiosk. Uh, okay, let's go back to kiosk uh, a bit. So with this user, we're not able to access kiosk. So let's go back and log in as the administrator. And the password is... And we're back. 
Hey bro, you made it. Uh, right, so we've covered announcements. The metrics is a nice way for you to quickly see what's, what you're earning. So uh, I don't have enough info here for the graphs to be rendered, but, but you know, if you've ran your app for a month or, or more, then you'll have like nice graphics. Uh, by the way, by the way, if you go to Spark website, you can click through to Laravel Spark uh, video series, um, which is which sort of covers all that I'm speaking here, but it's worth worth to watch, and um, it basically shows you what this uh, screen area looks like if you have a bit more data. So uh, what's cool about uh, Spark is that it lets me view my registered users. So I'm gonna look for this user by an email address. Email address, where are you? Okay, here. And it'll show me this user. And when I view this user, I'm able to add discount for this user, like amount or percentage, uh, how how often, once forever, multiple months, etc. So that's another cool way to do uh, promotions to your with your I mean, in regards to your users. But what's even better is user impersonation feature, which lets me as an, an administrator to view the app from the perspective of any user. So right now I'm viewing the app as uh, this uh, test user and whatever that user can do I'm able to and when I'm done testing bug fixing whatever I'm doing um, I'm able to go back to my account by clicking uh, this link so it's that easy and it's really cool so basically that covers the kiosk section I think um, components and stuff okay you can also customize this there's a kiosk blade blade file that lets you do that um, let's move on to notifications um, notifications as opposed to uh, announcements is another way to communicate something to your users though uh, the origination of notification is not necessarily administrator of a website. It could be something that your app did, for instance, uh, in automatic, it may send me uh, like a notification that my backup is complete. So how do I set up my system to do that? All right, so basically this is the way to do it. You just use this um, repository. So let's do that. Uh, by using the, I think that it's okay if we use home, 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 home controller. Uh, all right, that's cool. We need to add add this to a constructor. Let's replace this. And add this as well. And we need to fire a not notification. So it's pretty easy to do that by using this code. Let's do this whenever home page loads. So um, basically the, the second parameter here is the notification itself. So it has uh, an icon. I guess this is a class name or something that will attach a correct icon to a notification. It has a body. Um, it has action task and a link to that. I mean, action text and a link to that will be attached to this action. 
All right, but it also has a user variable. So it actually accepts a single user here. So you're not able to fire uh, like one notification to many users without using some sort of a loop. Um, let's grab a user. So um, app user first, but let's first see um, how that fails when, when uh, no, it is to see that. Why would we want to look at 500 errors? I hate those. But I think that this will fire and run just fine. So let's go back to the Spark app and then go back to home route. And it loaded and it fired a notification. So here it is, a team member completed the task. So if I load that a couple of times, should have a couple of couple more of these. And it's also linked to a link that I provided and it works really nice. And it also has a time signature here so that you know when this happened. All right. Uh, let's see what else do we have. 4.02 here is the Central European time. Still have some time. Um, Notification support requests. So this is a must have. Basically, if you're having a problem, you click email us, you fill this out and it'll basically, I guess, create an error because I didn't supply um, a mail uh, service that's, that's supposed to be used. Uh, so basically, whenever you need to check what went, went wrong, you're able to do that uh, using uh, like inspecting by inspecting Laravel.log or uh, by viewing uh, errors in your console since we're using um, like Vue.js and it fires, uh, it, 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 it connects to an app using API. So this is the way to debug. Okay, so this, this works. Um, hopefully, when you set a, a, a mail provider. Uh, what else? Teams. Yeah, this is really nice, nice feature. So, one way to start your project with Teams features is to provision a pro like, um, um, well, using Spark installer and, and supplying this uh, parameter here, like team billing. But if you started Without that flag, then you can go to, uh, I guess, I think that everything happens within Spark service provider and I should be able to, no, this one happens in user models. So let's set up teams. So I need this, uh, let's open user dot php i need this can join teams and i need to use can join teams yeah here and i think that's enough for some new features to appear in my admin panel okay so I have a team section here, so I need to create a team. Let's call it CMS podcast. And here it is. I can um, then go in and change like name and then the team photo, but I can also invite members. So let's invite the other member, the other user here, Let's search by email or actually I'm going to send out an invitation. And what did that, what this did, it actually tried to send an email uh, and this will not arrive since the, the email service is not set. 
in the background, but if I impersonate this user right now, let me go to kiosk and let me find that user again. And view that user and be him for a moment. When I go to Teams, I have a pending invitation. So I accept that and I'm a member of this team. I can leave the team and I can like view other members, but I don't have any other controls. So let's go back to my account. Uh, team section CMS podcast team. I can see, I should be able to see. No, 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 wrong section, dude. Uh, something's funky here. Uh, what's happening? So right now I'm in kiosk, but I want to be in Teams section. And it's not letting me. Though I think the link is fine. But it lets me go here, and when I go in this team, it works. So, how is this different? Spark.dev slash teams slash one. So, yeah, Taylor, you're missing settings in your URL here. Uh, maybe someone can send him that. Uh, bit of info. Or I will after I finish this uh, broadcast. Uh, so, um, I'm able to view membership um, by clicking this link in the left left hand side menu and I can see that this user has joined the team upon my invitation and I can remove him and I'm able to view all teams. I'm able to have multiple teams and that's really, really nice. So in your app, you're able to structure things. You're able to, I mean, let your imagination go wild. Um, what's especially nice about Teams is team roles. So you're able to have more than one role. And let's just copy and paste these to Spark Service Provider booted method. Sublime, Sublime, where are you? Where are you? Okay. So let's go back to the app. So did anything change? Yeah, I did. So I'm able to assign this member to a different, like with a different role. So I can say, okay, this guy's VIP member and then I can use any of these methods here to check his role and ownership and whatnot. So you're able to do pretty much anything you like with teams. And it also has team events and all that. That's really, really nicely done. And at, at the end, it has two factor authentication, which I will not demo since it uses Authy. Uh, service. All this service is, I believe, free if you start slow. So if we look at the pricing, starter pack with less than 100 authentications per month, which is really nothing. If you have one user, uh, I mean 10 users, you're more, li more likely than not to hit that uh, limit. But, you know, it's not that expensive. I believe if you need this feature, this is the way to use it. And more or less, I believe this covers it. Let's see if, if, if we skipped something down the road. My settings, subscription, payment method, yeah, invoices. So, um, if I need some extra billing information, this is where I enter it. 
and this will appear on my invoice that will be, I believe, emailed to me or the link would be emailed to me. So that's nice. And what else? Yeah, I think this covers it. So any questions, guys? Nope. Is someone still with me? <laughs> okay, so uh, finally what I wanted to mention is this is like first out of a couple of more broadcasts like this in a series, which will cover Laravel CMSs. Uh, I think that for sure we'll take a look at Statamic, 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 yeah, that's how it's pronounced version 2 and uh, that's a static site generator and we'll also look at the oh my god what's it called yeah I think it's Jigsaw by Titan also another static site generator and perhaps we'll take a look at I, I can't promise you but those two for sure and uh, after we uh, wrap that up um, then I think I'll, I'll go ahead and create a couple of posts to, to the CMS podcast page, which is, by the way, located here. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll rec like record a podcast episode about our Laravel CMS systems. And then I'll move on to different platforms and different stuff and explore, explore, explore. So hopefully uh, you enjoy this. If you stay this long, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, listen to the CMS podcast, watch the broadcast, and take care.